Well, hello there everyone. I'm so happy to be back uploading after being sick for two weeks. I feel much better now, so let's get going. But even though I feel better, do you know what's really sick? My new flywheel prototype. Look at this, uh, designed with my new uh, pragmatic uh, radicalism, radical pragmatism <laughs> design language. And I notice how beautiful it looks from this top view. This smells engineering to me. And do you know why? I think it's because of the 90 degrees. So for the marble machine to work, I am taking an engineer's approach, form from function through and through. I am not going to put an angle on the back leg because it's going to be more beautiful. No, 90 degrees, easy to weld, easy to CAD, easy does it, okay? So today, I'm not really done with this design yet. I'm working hard on it. But today we're going to focus in on one of the exciting modules of this flywheel prototype. And it's right here. It's the uh, drive pulley that from this belt here drives the flywheel over there. And this sub-assembly is exciting because it has a built-in secret. It has a torque limiter using marbles built in right here. So um, as I've been saying before, this flywheel will be downright dangerous. It will have so much power. Um, it's a pedal flywheel, so I push on this pedal with my foot and uh, force goes through this camshaft here and through this pulley down to the flywheel. And we have to protect uh, the machine from critical uh, failure, but also any human uh, using the Mar Machine 3. So that's why we need this uh, torque limiter. So let's dive a little bit into um, the torque lim limiter in itself. Here you can kind of see the design. I'm going to walk through this part by part so you understand what I'm doing here. So, but the cool thing is that I am innovating on this uh, mechanical clutch design because we already had this on the Mar Machine X. So you can see here that these are the marbles and there's some spring. So this is a um, ball, spring-loaded ball detents, which is the clutch function. But I have actually added a functionality. Through these Bowden cables, I can add a lever and manually disengage this clutch on the Mar Machine 3. So that is pretty cool. But I wanted to um, show you that we actually had this already on the um, Marble Machine X. So uh, check this out. These are uh, my lovely friends, Marius and Alex. And in this video, Flywheel Torque Limiter from the Marble Machine X, we explained uh, this function r really well. So let's listen in a little bit on what we said in this video. And the Flywheel Torque Limiter did save the Marble Machine X so many times. So this is a crucial function. So let's hear what we had to say back when. On the table we have the flywheel and on top here is the torque limiter. And we want everyone who are seeing this video to know why we're using a torque limiter and how it works. So we made this little diagram to explain why. This is the torque and if the torque gets too full and the flywheel just moves on and on and on and something comes into the gears, the flywheel will just drives the marble machine and the gears can explode. It will be a disaster and there will be no world tour. Little did I know that it was the whole MMX that was the disaster. <laughs> Moving on. With the torque limiter we can add a limit. So when the torque goes up to that limit, the torque limiter triggers and pushes down the torque to nothing, to a drrrr. The world tour is saved. So every time in a video when you hear this drrrr sound, it's because the torque limiter has tripped. If something goes wrong in the machine, the flywheel will off. So let's let's look at this demonstration. I, I think it's a good context for the CAD I'm about to show you. Automatically decouple itself. Check this out. Something goes wrong. So, 
So you heard uh, the sound that tick 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 tick. That's the torque limiter disengaging the power from the flywheel and the machine. It's isolating all the moment of inertia to the flywheel and protecting everything else. There's different kinds of torque limiting mechanism. For example, a shear bolt. It's basically just a screw that's uh, designed to break if the torque gets too high, but we can't reset that. So we need something that gets reset automatically. And then we chose one with marbles in it. Mm -hmm. And um, Alex can explain how this one works. So um, here you can see the, uh, this part is a pulley that will be driven by Martin and drives the flywheel. So this is the connection point to the marble machine from the flywheel. This is Alex CNC talking and uh, this idea came from Alex. So this was Alex's idea for the Marble Machine X. And th there is the torque limiter. When you apply enough force, then it will trip. And we can have a look inside here. There's the marbles. <laughs> there you can see some grooves, five, five grooves. And here are the five marbles. These marbles are spring-loaded, so they can be pressed down. Here you can see the marble and a spring under it. And in a normal operating state, the marbles sit in this groove here. And when the force is too high or the torque is too high, then the marble will get pushed in and can slip over the surface here. There we go. So let me hide this analysis. And let me show you part by part what all these parts are. Because <laughs> there's kind of a lot of parts in this design. So I think I'm going to roll back the uh, timeline to the beginning of time. And I'm going to step through and we can have a look at uh, all the parts. Oh, I have used a master sketch uh, to sketch this design. This is actually beautiful. So let's show all work features and you can enjoy my uh, master sketch. So this whole um, sub-assembly is derived from one single sketch. This is also something actually that I learned from Marius to do. So in this 2D sketch, I have all the measurements and all the holes and everything for the entire assembly. All the parts comes from from this sketch and how I'm getting the parts is that I'm revolving the parts from this sketch. Uh, so that is a super neat way to keep your, um, your, your designs clean. So there's a disc and here's a disc and then we have a plywood inner disc for the big pulley. We, ha we have another disc and we have three more discs I'm not revolving any holes so far. Um, so I'm just gonna fast forward here. Uh, and here is my clutch disc. This is a disc where I will be able to move and manually uh, engage this clutch. And then I am also doing these holes from the master sketch and I'm revolving them. And then I'm using, uh, uh, let me see if I can show you that. A nice little circular command to get those holes. Never mind that now, Martin. I'm so into CAD right now. It's so fun to CAD. So I'm, uh, I'm, I get distracted in this video. Okay, then we have some pins here. These pins are welded to this blue disc. And this disc moves back and forth. I can move it with my lever. And that's important for, because that disc is going to... Uh, relieve the spring pressure on the marbles. So uh, let's now hide all the work features. There we go. And I'm going to move forward. And here comes uh, the clutch functionality. It is a little convoluted, so it's a little bit hard to see each part by themselves. So let me run down to the end of the timeline and see if we can um, kind of go through it in the analysis view um, here. I think this could be a good view. So from the beginning, 
Um, this is the pulley. And here's the marbles. And the marbles are now forming a mechanical connection between uh, the right part of your screen. Let me actually do it like this. Wow. <laughs> We're doing engineering now, everyone. Uh, so here's the marble, and it's forming this connection between this part and that part. And it's being pushed by these springs here. And the, mar the springs themselves are being pushed by this disc right here. But then I have this magical disc that is not revolving. This is stuck to the frame of, of the assembly. I can show that here. So this disc here is actually stuck to, to the square tubing there. So none of these blue parts are rotating because that's my lever brake. So when I pull the lever, the Bowden cable inside these black cables, here's actually the Bowden cable. I have cadded parts from Carl Stahl Techno cable, so this is not a bike cable, this is an engineering Bowden cable. Uh, so Carl Stahl Techno Cables.de. I, I've, I've, I've used parts from them. So when I pull and this cable pulls in, the blue ring will pull closer to us in the screen and it will move um, this plate closer to us in the screen. Um, so if we go back to, to, uh, to this view, um, this is the disc that I will move to the right in the screen and it will push this disc to the right. And this is actually gonna work like a car brake. It will push it 13 millimeters until it touches this disc where it's going to break the machine. So then these in-moving, unmoving, in-moving parts, they are not revolving. The other parts are revolving until I push the brake lever and break the whole mechanism. And while I do that, when this is moving to the right, the spring tension is releasing on the marbles, which means that the marbles can travel to the right and break the mechanical connection. And that's uh, a clutch. So this is both actually a torque limiter, because in standard operation, when I'm not pulling the brake, this will act exactly like, like Alex showed on the video from Marmachine X, when I pull the brake, it will be a clutch. So it's a torque limiter and a clutch in one. How about that? Um, so we have also springs to the right side of this disc. It doesn't matter if you're not following completely. It's so convoluted, this design. So it's a little, even hard to show in this view. But with this, um, with these hex nuts over here, um, I'm setting the position of the brake system and with these hex nuts here, we are setting the spring tension of the torque limiter. So this is actually an adjustable system where I can set the spring tension of the torque limiter by pushing um, the springs behind this disc further in or further away from the marbles. So isn't that a mouthful, everyone? <laughs> so yeah, this is like... a. A musician gone engineering six years in, you know? <laughs> I absolutely love it. Okay, so that's the torque uh, limiter. Um, so I'm, I'm happy. I have kind of innovated on top of Alex's idea. So I want to show some other cool things uh, uh, with, with, with this design. First of all, I'm using a controversial bearing housing, namely no bearing housing. So down here we have an SKF bearing and it's being held by the sides of the M6 bolts only. So uh, there is, let, let me try to isolate this. So we're going to isolate you and we're going to isolate you and then I'm going to look for the, for the bearing. Uh, there we go. Oh, this is actually a good view. So uh, this is my hardware folder. So here we have a better view on the eight marbles, 16 millimeter diameter, pushed by these springs. And you can see there's a, there's a gap between these two springs. That's where my moving disc is going to be. 
uh, one of the two moving disks. And I think we're gonna roll these springs ourselves on a lathe uh, with Lucas uh, at Siegfried's Musical Music Cabinet Museum because it's uh, then we can get exactly the, the spring tension we want. Anyway, that's not what I was talking about. This, you're gonna hate this and I'm going to love it. We're gonna try it out on the prototype. So the trick with this design is that everything is uh, um, laser cut steel profiles from the same supplier. So I've been thinking about bearing housing and how I can do it correctly. And I actually have a bearing here. So let me talk a little bit why I'm doing the design like this. So what I want is to transfer the 90 degree straightness of the axle through the bearing and up into my pulley. And the best way to do that on a bearing is to clamp on the side of the bearing. So you want a lot of clamping force on the outer ring of the bearing. And, and that will uh, maximize the stiffness of your 90 degree. So if we uh, go, go, go back to CAD, this plate is clamping on the left side of the bearing here. This plate is clamping on the other side and it's being held um, center by these um, M6 bolts. So let me hide this disc and then, then, you, then you see exactly. Um, the reason I believe in this design, so the professional way to be, to have someone lathing a, a bearing housing, to make a bearing housing on, on a lathe, um, I plan to have 40 or 50 bearing housings on the whole Mar Machine X, uh, Mar Machine 3, <laughs> sorry. And if we're gonna do that custom for all of those, um, it's just a whole thing. I need another supplier, I need to find someone with a lathe. I know there's probably 10 machinists out there who wants to do it. But I want to see if I can limit uh, the, the supplier list for this machine. Just a simpler way to do it. And I expect that I can get this bearing as centered with the same precision as the CNC company can laser cut this steel profile. So the trick is to do some test cuts where we see exactly how tight this whole pattern can be to really hug the bearing correctly and that's it. Um, the bearing is going to be as centered as the pulley would be. Imagine this, we we ask a machinist to lathe a perfect bearing housing as many of you audience will want me to do. Then there's going to be some holes in that bearing housing to attach whatever goes to it. Those holes will go into a steel cut profile. So the same precision error that might be in the CNC cut steel profile, we will have that on a professional lathe bearing housing. So we go through all that work. And anyway, I love this design. <laughs> it's so pragmatic, it's radical pragmatism, and it's a prototype. So um, who will laugh last? Um, all of you who think that this is, a, is this is a newbie way to do things, or, or me who are, getting around uh, this issue. Anyway, so that's one thing, my controversial bearing housing. I've designed my own axle stops that is also going to be cut. Not even this, I'm gonna buy hardware. I know there are existing, blah, 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 blah. Okay, Martin, let me look. I actually have some notes here, so I don't go too long. Um, yeah. So that's the controversial bearing housings. These are my engineering Bowden cables, Carlstahl Technocables.de. Um, I hope they want to work with me. I haven't contacted them, no sponsorship, n nothing, but maybe, maybe they can supply the Bowden cables because they're really cu highly customizable with these end terminals and stuff. So this is an end terminal from Carlstahl Technocables. This is an um, uh, adjustment thing. Uh, from their bounding cable, super cool stuff, and 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 yeah. Oh, I want to show. Um, I want to show two more things uh, while we're at it. Uh, I want to show another controversial thing. So I've been thinking about how to. So if we go back to um, the main assembly, 
So the force is going to come from the pedal, through the camshaft, into the pulley, through the belt, into the flywheel, back from the flywheel into the pulley. And then when the clutch is disengaged, it's the energy stays in the pulley and the flywheel. When the clutch is not engaged, uh, that means that the pulley will drive this shaft. So how do I connect the pulley to the shaft? Normally you use a keyway, a little six millimeter uh, fiddly little thing to connect that. And I've come up with a little other a little newbie solution that I also love. <laughs> so um, you you can roast that if you want. Let let me show you here. I'm gonna isolate this on this shaft. I have cut a flat spot in the middle of the shaft. So this flat spot has the same dimension as 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 this quadratic end. Uh, where the power will go out to the next module. So this flat spot, how are we going to use this to locate the pulley, to bind the pulley, to lock the pulley, should I, I should say, to the shaft? Well, I'm going to isolate this and show you. So I have done this. So this is also a laser cut. Uh, f from the fr uh, from the steel profile from 247 steel and uh, so how do we get it on well i've split the part in two halves so when we uh, when we attach this we start with one half i put this over the over over the shaft onto the flat spot there and then we put the other half from the other side and this is going to be held together by all the million bolts that we're already using. So here you can see really, really well. I, I love this. Uh, here you can see how the same bolts are actually doubling up as two bearing housings, um, which I think will make a super stiff design. And then I have, I'm locking the whole mechanism uh, to the shaft through this half moon which means I have not a loose keyway. Uh, I am not a third part. So I skipped the whole part there. And um, I'm using the same half moon on, on several other parts here as well. So if I'm hiding this part. You can see that all these three discs have the same half moon. So if we just get the correct um, tolerance here when we do the laser cutting, this should go onto the shaft straight uh, from the cutting so yeah there you go this is actually a great view here how the springs comes through my middle discs hits these marbles and um, and that's the torque limiter that Alex so eloquently described in the beginning of this video and uh, yeah that's uh, let's let me look at the flywheel frame oh we're here uh, we're here and isolate all. So, there are some things missing on this design. Oh yeah, I wanted to ask you one fun thing. I wanted to make a competition. The price is honor and glory forever. What do you think these ratchets are for? Why are these strange looking ratchets in the middle of our uh, um, pulley design? What do you think? So I, I want to encourage everyone to leave your guesses in the comments. And, and next week, um, so I can give you a clue. There are some missing parts that I haven't catted yet that will interact with these ratchets. So they don't have their functional counterpart in, in this view. So that's a, that's a hint. So for everyone uh, getting the functionality of these ratchets, why I want them and how I'm going to use them, try to try to describe it as good as possible. And we'll try to pick a winner. Uh, and the prize is glory. <laughs> so yeah, that's it, my friends. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but something else that I've done with my new radical pragmatism is how I produced this video because this is a one take without edits because I'm so into the CAD now I've tried to learn to use global parameters and master sketches uh, to make the frame of this module 
<laughs> sorry. And I'll update, um, I'll upload some videos on, on, on that very soon. <coughs> soon. <coughs> <laughs> Radical pragmatism for y'all out there. You know what? I think I am getting better since these stupid first machines. I feel kind of victorious. I'm running along the river doing push-ups and I think Farm Machine 3 is going to be awesome. Just like you all are absolutely awesome. Mm, where's my button? Boom. Boom. <laughs>